Hello and welcome to this GigaROM uh, webinar on bridging the gap to continuous delivery. My name is John Collins and I'm going to be walking you through with a, a very fine set of panelists uh, what is a, a topic that's very interesting to, to many members of the software community, with a, whether they're starting out on the journey towards continuous delivery, whether they've been there for a long time, or whether uh, uh, they're, they're, they're moving into new domains and, and seeing whether continuous delivery works for them. Um, what, what we're going to be covering today, uh, I'll cover in a minute, but first I just wanted to run through a few things about housekeeping. We will ha we'll have a couple of polls uh, that we're going to be looking at. One is around the, where, where people are at on, on the journey towards continuous delivery. The other is the kinds of challenges that people face. So when we get to those, if you want to enter your responses, when I've seen um, sufficient responses uh, appear and, and the numbers start to, to drop down, then I'll, uh, I'll stop the poll and uh, pass it over to our panelists for their uh, analysis and feedback. Uh, second point is please do at any point uh, ask a question. We'll try and uh, address any questions that, that you ask uh, as we go along or we'll uh, um, save the best ones until the end. And um, yeah, we'd love, love for this to be an interactive uh, session. So, uh, so do, do please feel free to, to ask any questions you may have about uh, continuous delivery, continuous integration, where it's suitable, etc., etc. So if, without further ado, let, let's move on to, to our, our fine and established set of panelists. Um, there's me, uh, the uh, uh, principal analyst at InterOrbis. Uh, just to let you know, I, I've operated in the software consultancy uh, for many years, uh, and uh, but that's all you're going to hear from me because it's not about me today. I'm going to hand straight over to, to our panelists. And uh, first, Robert, can you, can you tell us a bit about yourself and, um, and what you're bringing to the party? Sure. So I'm Mark Benefield. I'm CTO of Evolve Beyond. We um, specialize in helping companies improve their software delivery capabilities. Um, that includes things such as continuous delivery. I've been um, doing this from, for a very long time, um, everything from small startups to uh, very, very large organizations. And I'm sure you've used a lot of the software that I've had to uh, work with. So that's me. How about you, Ryan? Hey, this is Ryan Shriver, I'm Director of Technology for Single Stone. We're a, a customer experience consulting company, and I lead a, a team of software engineers and designers, and I too work with companies helping them adopt a DevOps, Agile, and, and Cloud methods. Certainly some topics we're going to get to today. Uh, Andy Pemberton, tell us about yourself. Hi there. Yeah, hi. This is Andy Pemberton uh, from CloudBees. Uh, I run a team at CloudBees called the Solution Architecture Team. It's a global team of sort of solution architects and consultants and software engineers. Uh, CloudBees, what, what we do is we focus on Jenkins, a continuous integration and, and continuous delivery tool. Uh, we focus on extending Jenkins to the enterprise. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, panelists. And uh, let's move on and uh, look at our agenda. So the. The topic today is continuous delivery, and it's uh, for many organizations it's a nice dream. For, for some organizations it's already a reality, and uh, what we want to know is uh, how, how to cross that gap between um, uh, aspiration to, to reality for, uh, for the enterprise organization. We're going to be looking at first uh, a few words from our sponsor, CloudBees, who's, who's working in this domain uh, quite intensively, so, uh, so looking forward to hearing about that. We're then going to be asking questions around exactly what opportunity continuous delivery offers to software development organizations and the hurdles that uh, organizations can come across when, when they're trying to, uh, trying to move towards more agile uh, mechanisms and the most agile mechanisms such as those that continuous delivery offers. We're going to look into where organizations are at in terms of um, their ability to, to deliver on CD, if, if I may kinds of tools that they need, the kinds of processes that need to be in place, the kinds of roles and responsibilities. And then there's another dimension to this as well, because continuous delivery wouldn't really be possible without having a raft of technology um, foundation already available. So we're going to look into the importance of open source and, and how uh, open source frameworks have really uh, catalyzed the, uh, the advent of continuous delivery. And of course, the uh, cloud computing 
computing and cloud software, and, and what that uh, combination has enabled us to do in terms of uh, far more dynamic ways of delivering software. And finally, we want to make it real. We want to hear from our panelists some real success stories that uh, um, they've seen in organizations and, and, of course, that they've they've helped build. So um, I'm going to take it enough, enough about the, the, the overview. I, I'm going to take it um, directly to uh, this main question that I have in my head, which is why? What, what's, the, what's this all about? Is, does it really bring anything that people weren't able to do already? And um, I think we're looking at this from, from two perspectives. As I've said, we've got the process, we've got the, the, the tools perspective, and then we've got the, uh, the, the foundational elements perspective. So I'm going I'm, I'm to ask you first, Robert, so what is this all about? And, and should organizations really be seeing continuous delivery as a, as a stepwise uh, improvement in how, they, in how they deliver software? Absolutely. I mean, I guess the way that I would look at it is, is continuous delivery is really the next step in uh, in the journey. Um, and you've put it in here of a lot of companies have, have moved towards um, agile software development, um, really to be able to go through and improve their the feedback and their ability to deliver quickly. Um, and a lot of what is what is continuous delivery has come from extreme programming techniques and you know, automating builds and um, things such as uh, cloud capabilities and all that that really allow for people to get things out to market. Now, what the two things that I see uh, in and around all of this are um, you have two groups. You do have the group, the, the first group, which is the people that have started with um, you know, individual teams being able to try to improve their builds um, and trying to go through and deal with that. Um, and so they start by just you know, automating the builds. Um, then they look at how they can improve integration of, of their code and their code with other teams and then go from that. And then you have the other side, which is the operational side, which is people are really looking at how do I go through and streamline the pipeline so that I can improve the delivery. So the, the, the tools and the and the, the processes are really starting to merge and it's making it very be very, very exciting. And, and Brian, um, the, putting those tools back to back with the kinds of frameworks that are available today, are, are we really standing on the shoulders of giants? Absolutely. I think you know the, the virtualization cloud, which has made a lot of this possible. I mean I think, as I mentioned, CI has been around the dev space for 10 plus years. It's sort of a known entity. What's newer is the ability to virtualize storage, compute, and networking. And so that really is what enables continuous delivery. And so now what you've got is you're moving beyond the dev realm in the ops realm. And really continuous delivery is about bridging that role between development and ops. So really it's, it's software, um, but I can have ability to take a change and run it all the way through, even provisioning and configuring my infrastructure as a part of that. Well, I'm going to turn things over to you now, Andy, because uh, essentially uh, CloudBees uh, as an organization was, was set up to, uh, to help organizations uh, le leverage these, these, two, these two dimensions. So uh, this is a little bit of word from our sponsor, but equally um, you're a valid member of the panel and uh, your organization brings a lot to what people are able to do in, in this domain. So, so if, I, if I hand over to you and, and you tell us a little bit about CloudBees at this point. Sure, thank you. Yeah, so we're, we're really excited to, to sort of help put on this webinar today. You know, I think our, our panelists here really said it really well, Ryan in particular, is that, you know, there's sort of a maturity scale um, that we see folks going down as far as this DevOps journey. And this is, you know, at CloudBees, I have the lucky, uh, you know, the fortunate opportunity to sort of be in the space and do this all week. And um, we work with all sorts of customers. So as I mentioned earlier, um, CloudBees is the Jenkins Enterprise company. We're, we're a, con a, a leader, you know, an industry leader, a thought leader in the continuous delivery space. Um, we, we're, you know, like I said, we do this uh, 40 hours a week, and we really work really heavily around the Jenkins open source project. And so uh, many of our engineers and, and, and our leaders and executives at CloudBees are, you know, uh, elite contributors to the Jenkins project and, and various other really well-known sort of open source technologies, particularly around the DevOps space. So the, the CloudBees continuous delivery platform, it, it, it provides a range of solutions starting from, you know, on-prem solutions to, to fully cloud-based Jenkins platform as a service. 
and uh, you know it's it's used all over the world to power organizations' ability and doing exactly what our panelists just talked about, accelerating uh, time to market for software projects. Um, we really focus on enterprise problems. So the Jenkins open source project is is really robust. It's really an amazing sort of testament to the to what community and what open source can do. Um, where CloudBees comes into play is we really focus on sort of the um, enterprise scale needs uh, of, of Jenkins. And so, yeah, where, where do we add value? You know, um, like Ryan said, we, we, we're here to help companies deliver software faster um, by really honing in on various sort of areas of the maturity scale for DevOps and continuous delivery. Um, we're here to help companies do this stuff uh, better and do it with higher quality. Next slide, please. Cool. So, you know, in, in looking at our platform and in looking at what we do, um, you know, we're re really focused around continuous delivery. I think one of the panelists mentioned, you know, continuous integration is a trend that, or, or sort of a, a, a methodology and a practice that's been around for quite a while. And, and Jenkins itself is formerly called the Hudson Open Source Project. Uh, Jenkins really started out that way. It was a tool really just used for building. But at its core, Jenkins is actually a really amazing automation engine. And so where we're seeing things move is Jenkins, and, and with the help of CloudBees, Jenkins is really being positioned to be sort of a, the hub of the continuous delivery flow. And so, you know, if you look at, you know, the bridge, this bridge is one of the panelists mentioned between development and operations teams. We're seeing mature organizations use Jenkins all along the various phases of that cycle. You know, they're very, especially at large organizations, there, there are lots of ind individual steps and lots of um, teams and people and processes uh, that, that need to happen before a given piece of software can make it to production. And so as you can see sort of in the diagram here, uh, you know, starting on the far left side really with a lot of the tr activities that have traditionally been run by developers and development teams, um, you know, we really see testing and, and really focusing on ways to continuously test software. That's sort of the first bridge out of just the CI space into a larger view, a more robust view of continuous delivery. And so, you know, there, there are all flavors of testing we help organizations do from, you know, more uh, isolated unit tests all the way up through full-scale production load production level load tests um, and then obviously as, as these types of tests pass and, and you have some quality uh, you know you have some confidence in the quality of, of the software artifacts as you move them through this life cycle you can use Jenkins to to in, in cloudby's delivery platform to sort of help automate the deployments to different environments um, along the way and obviously sort of the end goal Obviously, it's all for naught if if it, if if uh, we don't make it to production. So obviously, the end goal is to is to then sort of automate, you know, at the far end of the maturity scale, automate production deployments. And so, you know, at CloudBees, we work with, uh, you know, all of the major uh, platform as a service uh, players and cloud players. So we we uh, are doing a lot of work with Pivotal and Amazon and and a lot of these companies. Um, around you know building and automation automating the steps it takes to get apps deployed to those types of environments so this is sort of um, you know where 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 CloudBees is positioned and, and where we see Jenkins kind of continuing to grow next slide I'm please seeing a, a, a big virtual conveyor belt like a manufacturing plant where uh, you know it, because each chunk just keeps shifting along exactly and one of the things I find interesting so if you'll advance a slide here one of the things I find really interesting is that you know, at times it seems, you know, as you automate, things begin to move more and more quickly, and at times it can feel like you actually may lose some control. And this this slide, I think, is is a good example. It sort of indicates, wow, there's really a lot of tools we have to wrangle into this process. Uh, but what I was going to was gonna say, I mean, I, I thought your job was to make it simple, and then you threw up this slide. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. That's, I love this slide for exactly that reason. It's not simple, uh, and 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 CloudBees can kind of help bring some simplicity to the environment because um, ultimately there are lots of tools that come into play to actually automate the full picture. And you know, like I said earlier, luckily I have the fortunate advantage to be able to do this um, day in and day out, night and day. Uh, you know, to work in this space, and and I know how complex it can be. I talk to a lot of really large customers. Um, and you know, 
this slide covers many of the vendor tools that we work on integrations with, but not the proprietary tools and the in-house written software. And so, as I mentioned earlier, where, where we really see Jenkins sort of playing and, and thus where CloudBees plays is and sort of being the hub of it all. So Jenkins is already a really great build tool and it can, at the far left end of the spectrum, it can already integrate really well with your source control tools, your build tools, and your binary repositories and that type of thing. Um, on through these testing tools, uh, uh, onto the continuous deployment tools and that type of thing. So hopefully this kind of gives you a picture, you know, from a maturity perspective, I, we find that the organizations who are sort of uh, most mature and, and thus best able to kind of reap some of the benefits of the space are really leaning hard into one tool. And, and, and sort of, for example, leaning hard into Jenkins and figuring out how to automate or integrate these various other tools sort of into that hub. And so from that perspective, um, you know, the CloudB CD platform is really about, you know, Jenkins becoming this hub for continuous delivery. And so, you know, as, as a case in point, if it's helpful, the types of things we're doing at CloudB is, you know, in addition to our sort of our product offerings and, and the support and on-prem and cloud support that we provide, um, we also contribute heavily to the Jenkins open source project. And so, mm -hmm. for example, we, we've added a, a workflow construct as a first-class citizen in Jenkins. And so you can now, you know, in a, in a very uh, the, contributed to open source now. So you, I encourage the folks on on the webinar to actually go check this out. But you could actually build out workflows in Jenkins now to kind of model uh, in a very sort of consistent and clean way the steps along this sort of pipeline. So I hope that's helpful, uh, just in sort of positioning CloudBees in the webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and it's a great segue into our poll because uh, um, what we're going to be asking is uh, exactly where people are on the journey to uh, continuous delivery. I know it's it's very easy to throw in terms like continuous delivery and just say, are you doing it or aren't you doing it? And uh, make it sound like it's a, a, a place where uh, an organization should be or can be, etc. What we know in reality is that uh, organizations uh, tend to be somewhere along a spectrum of, of behaviors. Maybe uh, they are very uh, wed to, to um, uh, traditional ways of developing software, waterfall methodologies, or the life cycles, or, or uh, um, maybe they've uh, put their first toes into, into the agile water, as it were, um, and are considering how, how to adopt those on, on a, a broader basis. Maybe there's a blend going on. Maybe there's some some leading edge projects that uh, um, and in initiatives where uh, parts of the organisation are, are really leading, and, and other parts of the organisation are, are, are kind of um, more reticent to, to embrace such things. Uh, uh, maybe there are organisations that, that really have uh, in, in embraced uh, the whole continuous integration, agile thing, looking at continuous delivery, or even uh, they're doing it. And I, I hope some of your uh, customers. Uh, Andy are, are, are actually are actually there, um, and, and we'll come back to that as uh, uh, I, I know as, as some of your 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 star examples of of continuous delivery done right. So so with that in mind, I, I'm going to um, kick off the poll here, and um, if uh, if you could uh, give give your responses, as I say, I'll be watching for the responses, and uh, once those start slowing down, and um, and then we'll we'll see what what our panelists. Uh, uh, think about them. Here we go. So uh, you should now be able to see the poll, uh, and um, we can see those uh, results coming in. Up to uh, 10, 15 percent of uh, responses are in now. 20 percent. Hey, it's clever this technology. So uh, there's um, there's a uh, there's an interesting um, yeah there's an interesting uh, um, first case coming in here, but it's 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 flicking around. As, as we go around, uh, panelists, um, may, maybe um, what, do, what do you think the answers are going to come out starting to look like? Yeah, I believe this is Andy from CloudBees. You know, I think uh, from you know just from my experience, most folks that we talk to are doing some flavor of CI and and, and are dipping their toe and, and starting to kind of consider where CD fits into their picture. Of course, we talk to some who are very mature, but. Um, but I, I would guess on the bell curve. So you, we, we're expecting to see a bell curve here. Um. I, I would tend to agree with Andy there. Uh, most companies I work with, uh, CI is a standard practice, but CD is, is still a ways away. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it is uh, starting to look. Yeah, I would. I would also agree. <laughs> okay. Cheers, Robert. We're. we're um, um, I think. I think the voting is slowing down. Any last votes there? Just uh, if if we can catch you, then 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 click that button. Otherwise, I'm going to close. I'm going to close this poll. Uh, five, four. Oh, there we go. There's 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 a couple more just coming in there. So, uh, but but it's not really changing the results now. So, um, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going I'm going to close this poll. But interestingly, there's um while it's a bell curve closed now, and I, I'm going to share the results because I'm sure you're very interested to see these. So you should now be able to see the poll results. Um, what we can see is that. Um, very few people on the webinar, I know this is a self-selecting sample, very few people on the webinar, only 2% say that they don't really think this is for us, which, um, okay, that's a, that's a positive. <laughs> um, but equally, very few, very few indeed feel that they're really um, already there, already in the, the continuous uh, delivery nirvana. Um, you guys, if you have any uh, opinions or questions uh, about your experiences, uh, up there at uh, uh, Shangri-La level, then we'd be delighted to hear them. But we are seeing um, uh, some 38% that are using a blend. 24% um, say that they've embraced uh, continuous integration and now looking at continuous delivery. And 29% are, are kind of still more coming out of the starting block. So I'd say while it's a bell curve, it's still more tending towards the uh, uh, the people that are, are still stepping into the into, into the into the pond in the shallow end, as it were, rather than uh, rather than really getting in deep yet. So, um, if I may, let let's turn this to our panelists. Ryan, what do you think uh, about these results? Do they reflect your experience? I think so. I think you have to remember who's who's signed up to come to these panels. Uh, these webinars are people who want to learn. So, you know, with that context, even though I tend to more engage with some of the people that are kind of in the, the 24% and 38%. It, it, it would make sense why people are, are joining this webinar to learn more about this. Sure. Uh, and, uh, and Robert, um, uh, any, any, anything to add on the, uh, um, I mean, to me, there's, there's quite a few people that actually have embraced the, the technology, so that they're, they're not just wanting to learn, they're wanting to learn more, maybe. Yeah, I, and I, and I agree with Ryan. <laughs> This is somewhat self-selecting. I, I often see, um, I, I do see the, the 24 and 38 percent side. I actually also encounter quite a few of the uh, 29s as well. Usually they're the really large enterprises um, where I think there's a lot of legacy and people are trying to, to you know, they hear uh, about continuous delivery and they hear about agile and they they're desperate to get there, and usually they wind themselves around the axle a bit, and then need a lot of help in order to be able to unwind them. So yeah, I mean, this none of this surprises me at all. And in fact, it's good to see that it's continuing to creep uh, up the the way um, um, as as time goes on. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's a great analogy, uh, winding around the axle, because uh, we've all been there with a piece of string, right? Um, and uh, I think what what what's interesting uh, here maybe. Um, Andy is, is 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 how while there's 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 some positivity here that there's there's also opportunity for for organisations to do more. I'd love to see. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do this on these polls, but I'd love to see this uh, cut against the size of the organisation, as Robert suggests. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is definitely really interesting, and and in sort of aligns. I think you you heard a common theme in the panelists, and I'll pile on to say, yeah, I agree. This this matches my experience. It, it also kind of matches something I think is is fundamentally true, and I think maybe helpful for the folks attending the webinar today, which is that this you know this is a spectrum. There's not like binary. You're either doing CI CD or you're not. Um, like anything else, really, you can get significantly mature. Uh, in one area, and then Moore's law strikes, and the tools all change, and you need to ramp up on something else tomorrow. So, you know, I think it's a really exciting space to be in. It's a really exciting time to kind of work around this space. Um, mm -hmm. I think this poll is kind of reflective of that, you know, th that nature, the the spectrum of experience and spectrum of maturity of of DevOps, really. Mm -hmm. So let let's turn to some of, some of these big questions and how how to move from uh, earlier in the spectrum to later in the spectrum. The the first question we've really got to ask is why do it? So 
So um, I'm going to come back to you again, Ryan, and, and just say, are these benefits really um, solid enough to, to merit organizations moving uh, uh, into what is a, it's a pretty scary territory sometimes? Well, I would say only if being very responsive to your customers is important to you. I think the companies <laughs> I see adopting <laughs> so I think the companies I see adopting this time to market, uh, but time to market being driven by two things. One is the ability to want to react to your customers and their needs in a, in a more rapid fashion, and also the flexibility to change as the market changes. And so time to market I see is one of the, the biggest benefits, and under that whether you need to be more responsive or need to be more adaptable to the market. Lower on the spectrum is things like quality and risk and audibility, and, and these are important things, but I tend to see that companies I work with the time to market uh, and the flexibility tend to be the overarching drivers behind this. Mm -hmm. I, I guess you've got to put risk of um, risk of making mistakes against risk of not doing anything at all and therefore not adding any value. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, so, um, uh, and uh, may, may, maybe yourself, uh, Andy, um, th this integration point. Um, is, I, I know this came up in our discussions before before we held the webinar. It, it's kind of, it's crucial to get the. It's not just about continuous um, uh, delivery, but first of of, of course you've got, you've you've got to actually be able to integrate, right? Right, exactly. I mean, um, integrate early and often. They say uh, so. You know, the point made just a minute ago around you know delivery and auditability and traceability. Honestly, what's interesting is as you do more of this and as you develop more repeatable processes with this type of thought process, so as you get more repeatable because of your DevOps strategy, honestly, risk decreases over time. So it's, it's, I think that's why the ROI is so interesting and why, you know, as the poll shows, most organizations are doing this. And CloudBee is just really, you know, able to build a business around helping large enterprises do this stuff, in particular with Jenkins, is that, you know, Time to get stuff done decrease. Time to get software to market decreases, but um, a quality increases and risk goes down. So it's one of those mm -hmm. things you can truly get more done faster with lower risks. Um, okay. So, but yeah, um, that's really where I see things headed. Cool, uh, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. I was just say one other thing was you know you can't sustainably go fast unless quality is high. You can start out there, but you know, for companies that have adopted Agile and adopting these methods, you can't sustain year over year uh, rapid time to market unless quality is high. And, and really, what we're talking about here in CD is is taking a lot of the manual, error prone work out of it and replacing it with more automated, streamlined processes. And so, I think that's another thing: is it's not just a one time there. You're really building a sustainable capability of taking new ideas to market again and again. Okay, I mean, if you if you're trying to, I, I'm going to use a wood turning analogy here. I, I like turning candlesticks in my in my spare time, and when you've got something spinning very fast and you hit it in the wrong direction, you know very quickly if you're doing it wrong. And I think that's that's where we are with quality on this. And and when when the continuous delivery wheel is spinning fast, uh, if if things go wrong, they go wrong. Um, so uh, you've got to get it right first time. Quality is essential. Uh, it's it's not just something that you need to do as you go along. That's for sure. Um, so t turning to you, uh, Robert, um, are there examples of uh, applications that you really see people thinking being the ones that uh, where they're going to get benefit from uh, continuous delivery, or or is it just anything goes in in, in terms of application type? I think this that's an interesting question. Um, what I see is um, a lot of people think of, uh, of of continuous delivery as being something that's more about a webby sort of a thing or an online service sort of a thing. Um, actually, where I've seen um, it starting to take off a lot more is uh, in and around uh, both the mobile space as well as uh, embedded uh, tools and a lot of the more traditional types of software. 
So while web um, and online services are much more focused on how can we get out there really, really quickly and everything, a lot of the more traditional stuff, um, as well as mobile, um, you have to really have the level of transparency in order to be able to understand, can I get things out? Can I get things out with quality? So give an example, mobile. Anyone who's ever released mobile apps knows that you have uh, windows uh, to be able to get your things into Apple Store or um, those types of things. And it, you only have a certain amount of, of time to be able to get it out right and be able to get the adoption. So how do you go through and build that level of confidence? How do you get it so that you actually have a good understanding of what's going on? Well, by being able to go through and have the level of transparency and as um, uh, Ryan and, and Andy said, uh, to be able to go through and get that quick feedback loop. So I mean, one of the one of the examples uh, I'll give two quick examples. Uh, one that I saw was a company that was uh, doing a lot of embedded systems. In fact, uh, we were uh, trying to do some uh, work with uh, a braking system, um, and uh, we wanted to be able to go through and have a quick feedback loop because, well, again, you can't really uh, do lots of releases out to cars, at least not yet. So you have to go through and, and be able to uh, uh, get that quick feedback loop. Another one was as an industrial applications, and so I've worked with a lot of, of um, very, very big uh, um, uh, industrial uh, types of companies, the ones that produce uh, like energy and those types of things. Um, they have extremely low tolerance for failure. Um, you know, a lot of people kind of like to have electricity and their water working and all that. So, um, but, yeah, but at the same time, um, they can't really have the three-year, five-year uh, uh, release cycles. So they're trying to figure out how can they be much more uh, uh, responsive to what's going on in the market, as well as to be able to still have the, the confidence that they're producing things quickly. And so I see, um, I see that happening as well. So I wouldn't necessarily say there's in any one ideal case. I think that it's applicable across, uh, across the, the software industry. I, I think that you're going to see it move more and more towards the more traditional end as time goes on and as people start to see um, a lot more examples of, of big wins um, uh, within that area. Andy, do you, uh, quick, quickly, because we, we do want to move, move on to uh, the challenges themselves, and I know that Jared uh, Stein, you had a question about the challenges, um, but before we do move on, does that map onto your experience, Andy? It does, yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that's interesting about Jenkins uh, in this, in this, you know, with regard to this question is that, you know, look, Jenkins has this amazing open source community, and it's this amazing open source CI and CD tool. And what's cool about it is there doesn't have to be an ideal use case for Jenkins because it's sort of where is the community right now. That's what's, to me, one of the, the most awesome powers of open source is as the community evolves and as people, uh, you know, at mass, at large, kind of uh, start to change what they focus on, the tool gets better for different cases. So, yeah, right now, today, of course, J Jenkins and, and, and Cloudbees do mobile and web and embedded systems really, really well. But as things change and tools and technologies change, you know, Jenkins plug-in architecture allows, um, you know, allows Jenkins to change with it. So as, that's so really it's cool. Evolving, uh, really it's cool evolving question. with the use cases. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, Challenges to you, to your point, uh, Jared, and, and thank you for your question, which was what, what was your biggest challenge to CD implementation, and, and how did you overcome it? Um, uh, this is a, this is a very broad area, um, and uh, I think uh, any any bringing any change into an organization is, is bound to cause some uh, some challenges. But there's some very specific challenges to uh, to going down the path towards continuous delivery that we want to cover. But Ryan, what 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 does make this stuff so hard? Because theoretically, uh, doing stuff quicker should make it easier, no? You would think, but uh, I, I get back a lot to it. It's people and it's organizational. I mean, traditionally, you know, app, app dev has been in one group, and operations has maybe been in different silos. There's groups that manage the data center. There's groups that does the networking, groups that does security. And a lot of CD just cuts across all of those groups, as you saw that sort of earlier slide that Andy showed up. And so, so what I see is a lot of the siloed operational aspects of the past and really CD is cutting across those and these are teams that aren't used to working together, don't have common metrics, don't have shared metrics. I think that's one. I think the second thing is 
it now in CD, you understand the full stack. So basically from the hardware or the virtualized so, uh, hardware on up, you have to know a lot more about that full stack. And traditionally, there's other, if you're a developer like myself, there's other people who dealt with that and worried about that. And then the last thing I'd say is, is that slide again Andy showed earlier. There's lots of different technologies in play now. And, and although some things are simpler once you get it right, there's so many options and so many different things that getting all these things to work together and really wrapping your head around all these is, is challenging. I mean, the, the, the whole thing that's breaking down the silos, is, and, and, and is, it, is it really just a question of telling people just get with the program, just deal with it, start talking to each other, start collaborating, or, or do we have to be a bit more sensitive to uh, traditions than that? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, Ryan hit the nail on the head. I mean, a lot of these organizations have become really successful in certain models, and you know, it's just, it's change management, and it's fun, it's fun to talk about this stuff because at CloudBees, we, we, we see this all day, and the, the change management piece, uh, you know, is something you can't really ignore. So we talk about the technology ad nauseum, and as that slide showed, you know, there's tons of logos. I mean, the technical side of this space is challenging to figure out, and that's, you know, that's what, that's what helps keep the lights on at CloudBees. We, we provide on-prem uh, support for the Jenkins Open Source Project. And we do that because folks need it. Um, so the technology challenges themselves are there. But I mean, to Ryan's point, we can't really understate how hard it is to change in a big organization. Um, you know, my background, much like Ryan and some of our other esteemed panelists here, is really in the consulting world. Um, you know, prior to, prior to coming to CloudBees, and so I know it's you know when you when you get into big companies, it's tough sometimes to make make these tar types of large scale changes, even if there's even if there's a very sort of scientifically calculated ROI you know, to get after. It's just people and process are often hard to change. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wanted to ask, uh, in your experience, Robert, that, that not, not so much whether to, re to reinforce those points, but do, do the challenges vary depending on, on where you are in, in, in the, the, the program, in maturity, if you like? So are there challenges more likely for organizations that are starting out on the path compared to organizations that are further down the line? Well, yeah, I would say that there are um, ones that have already gone down the, the path or usually have started by putting in some CI systems that have dabbled a bit with, uh, with some sort of, whether you call it cloud technologies or even just some automated deployment aspects of things. Um, they're going to be, be able to go through and at least be able to taste where things can possibly go. I would say for those that are just starting out, I think the, the big thing to remember about um, continuous delivery is continuous delivery doesn't necessarily mean continuous deployment. Continuous delivery means that you're, you're really being able to go through and, and look at uh, um, what is going on within your life cycle. How, what is going on that is slowing stuff down? What is your hygiene level? Um, and what are the things that you can go through and do to to improve the feedback loop and to be able to potentially speed things up? Now, I've worked in a lot of regulatory uh, types of environments where they have very, very strong governance. And I've had a number of people go, whoa, I can't do uh, CD. Um, you can do CD. That doesn't mean that you necessarily are going to have a developer developing something and Im immediately pushing it out to, to production. What it does mean is, is that you're going to be facilitating the steps um, and being able to pull the information together that allows you to be able to uh, get things out a lot sooner than you otherwise could. Okay, thank you. And it's a, a good introduction to our next poll, um, which is around the, the kinds of uh, challenges our panelists uh, see in the, uh, in the en route to, to continuous delivery. Here we, we, we covered whether or not it's challenged to, about tools and technologies, about team skills, about where the difficulties uh, bringing in senior stakeholders, uh, the, the people that pay for stuff and the people that uh, decide stuff. Um, just making that business case to, to the rest of the organization um, because clearly it's going to have to happen before any uh, uh, proof by, by results can take place. And then finally this whole DevOps question around uh, breaking down those silos. So uh, let, let's launch this panel and um, see, what, see what you guys are uh, uh, seeing as the, the, the challenges out there. Uh, and while, while we do, um, I've got a kind of philosophical question for for you, Ryan, um, it strikes me based on the uh, 
the things that you're saying, that uh, continuous delivery is almost a, a symptom of doing software development well, as opposed to a goal to be achieved. Is, is that a fair statement? Interesting. Let me, let me ponder that for a second. I do think when, you know, when I see CD, the app, the app side of the house t tends to get it and is there. It's when I, especially when I work in IT operations, this is where it usually has a lot more of the challenges. And that's primarily because, it, at least here in the U.S., IT operations usually rolls up under the CFO, and the goal is to keep costs low. The goal isn't to expect the right time to market. And now what's happening is even if your company is not in the software delivery space, your customers are tending to interact with you over mobile, tablet, and web devices, and you're kind of being forced to become somewhat proficient at software delivery. And so that's, that's causing changes in IT operations that are starting to reward time to market over necessarily just keeping costs low. Um, and so, you know, but it is a challenge because it's a people culture sort of thing. And if the metrics of the highest level operations aren't incentivized around, you know, time it takes to get a development environment or time it takes to raw a new release, then it's still going to be a tough challenge. Yeah, Ryan, this is Andy. You know, I'll, I'll pile on there. It's, that's a really interesting response. And one of the things that's interesting if you look at these siloed organizations is, you know, uh, yeah, like you said, oftentimes there's different reporting chains involved and there are different signing authorities to even do projects and, and pay for, you know, software and services and that good stuff. Um, you know, prior to a lot of these technologies like virtualization and VMware and cloud providers and Pivotal and Red Hat, um, you know, the servers and the bare metal are, are what the ops teams sort of, uh, an infrastructure type team sort of had. Uh, I don't want to call it the feather in their cap, but that was the job role. And so the software folks tended to have to kind of get in line and wait to get their so their hardware to run their software on. But now, uh, you know, these software teams can kind of go out and break the rules and click a few buttons, and all of a sudden they're able to deploy some stuff to the cloud. And so I think, um, you know, to Ryan's point, just to pile on, it's it's, it's interesting to watch because it really means these these ops organizations have to be responsive. And 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 so I think you're seeing. Uh, the two parties kind of come together to say, hey, it's getting easier and easier to get infrastructure and to get stuff done. Um, so how can we work together to automate it and just make it that much better and faster and controlled and low cost? Because um, the ops folks, that, you know, or whoever, someone in the organization obviously still has that type of mandate. So, Okay, I'm going to close this poll. Any, any, any guesses, uh, uh, Robert, on, on, on what's, the, what's going to be the, uh, um, the leading... Uh, Response there? Um, <laughs> no, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I could actually see um, quite a few of these. I mean, I would definitely agree with both Ryan and Andy. A lot of the challenges are, are going to be around a lot of the silos. Um, and that does drive a lot of the, the various different problems um, that you do see with being able to get the, the business cases and, and all of that. Okay, cool. All right, I'm closing the poll. And now I'm going to share the results. And what's fascinating about the results is, yes, 20% uh, uh, of organizations say that building new relationships is a challenge between uh, developers and, uh, and operational staff. Um, but 40% uh, say that uh, skilling up the teams is, uh, is, a, is, a ma is a major challenge. Now, I would potentially put those back to back because uh, people need the knowledge in order to build the relationships. So, uh, so everything is still correct, um, but the the answer to, uh, to 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 resolving the problem almost is 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 that training development, helping people understand the benefits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, if I hand over to you, Andy, what, what what do you think about these results? Yeah, I think I think it goes to show there's there's not there's not a clear answer, um, but I, I I tend to agree personally. You know, just if you look at the the uh, the bars on the pole here and the stats. I, I mean, honestly, I think it's it's people in process. Those are the hardest things to change. Um, you know, and I think that's why, as I mentioned kind of earlier, CloudBees does a really great job in this support space. You know, we we have, uh, you know, obviously we we support Jenkins open source from a CI/CD perspective. We also have closed source software to help organizations scale Jenkins to support these CI/CD activities. But we also have a really robust support channel as part of the subscription you get. 
uh, with hobbies. And honestly, I think we spend as much time, you know, just troubleshooting technical issues as we do just sort of educating our our customers and and and, and clients on on sort of the space and and what what types of things they can they can use Jenkins for and how mature they can get. So yeah, I mean, it, it, the results really resonate with me there. I'm going to I'm going to move on to the next slide, even as I ask Robert what what your opinions are on them, because essentially this is going back to back with uh, um, uh, the the challenges um, in in terms of what what characterizes continuous delivery uh, done well, and and what kinds of organizations are you seeing that that are really addressing those challenges, getting people skilled up, dealing with the DevOps silos, etc. How would you? What would your scorecard be of, of your client base, uh, Robert? I've seen a, a full spectrum, and this gets back to the first poll that um, that that we had. Um, I I have seen some um, absolutely amazing organizations, some real top class ones, um, and then and they've done things that I think a lot of people don't don't even think about necessarily with continuous delivery. So. Um, you know, when you when you go through and you you start and you automate your builds and um, then you go through and look at uh, improving the pipeline. Um, <clears throat> there, I've seen some that have gone all the way all the way down to, uh, and I think this actually really addresses the the uh, a lot of the problem that exists um, with the the silos between operations and and development is. Uh, um, where they've u utilized the, the CD, CICD setup in order to be able to get a real good idea of what the actual risk side of things are and used it as a, a risk management tool. Um, and then tie that back up to um, all of the uh, release management aspects to, to be able to decide, can we go through and release this thing out immediately or, or do we have to go through and do some, some reviews on stuff, as well as to be able to even predict these are the types of potential failures that we might have with this. Are we okay with that, and can we can we handle that? Um, I've also seen some um, uh, teams that have uh, really gone through and looked at uh, and tied it into a lot of the lean startup aspects, um, where they've tied it into a lot of the business intelligence side as well. So not only did they get a good view of the risk management side, but they've tied the whole pipeline in and tied it into uh, BI tools that allow for um, business analysts to push things out, do a lot of A-B testing, be able to get the feedback um, to allow them to, to understand what are the next steps that they should go through and take. So uh, I've seen a lot of that, and then I've seen the, 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 the other side of things, where there are a lot of, of uh, organizations that are just trying to figure out how to get started. They have a, a, a very large legacy uh, code base, and they, and they might be u utilizing technologies that are very uh, old or obscure and they're trying to figure out, well, how do I get this thing to be automated? How do I go and automate tests? Um, how do I go through and, uh, and, and build a pipeline? So, so I've seen all of that along the way. Cool. I mean, we're actually, this uh, segues nicely into a question from uh, uh, Rag Ramanathan uh, about advanced uh, CICD deployments. If I can throw this one in, in your direction, uh, Ryan, uh, the question is, how are advanced the ICD deployments handling traffic shifting from one release to another, e.g. in blue-green deployments, how is traffic being shifted from blue-green in a controlled manner? Now, I have no idea what blue and green the traffic deployments are, but I assume this whole release management is a real uh, success factor for uh, continuous delivery. So the short answer is load balancers. Uh, <laughs> The, the, the longer answer is basically is the blue-green is just the, the concept of putting a new release out there and slowly bleeding off traffic off your old release to the new one, typically the oh, okay. balancer, some, some network layer in front of your app. And so it's a common pattern in, in CD, uh, certainly. Uh, and today with the virtualization uh, of behind it, it doesn't need to be you have two physical data centers. It just needs to be uh, two, two virtual um, uh, applica areas to run your application and you use load balancer and, 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 and the software and the monitoring that goes with that to migrate traffic mm -hmm. from one to the other. And uh, what, what, while you're there, uh, the, this last question on, on the slide, uh, what does ROI look like? I mean, when, when you're um, working with uh, your, your clients and they're feeling the benefits, what benefits are they kind of going, wow, this is great because we fill in, fill in the space? What, what, what are they really appreciating? 
so I, I get back to the time to market is where we're actually driving bigger. But a lot of times, even on the op side, it's provisioning and configuring uh, infrastructure. It's not uncommon that I see four to six weeks to provision out a, a test ecosystem or a dev ecosystem. And now we're going mm -hmm. in there and basically making that scriptable and repeatable and turning this more into self-service. Um, so from an efficiency perspective, if I can say I need an environment and within a couple of hours I have an environment where that used to take me four weeks, it's a huge, huge advantage on both the ops side, meaning they don't have queues of, of, of work lined up to do, um, but really on the customer side, typically the developer side. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you very much. And Andy, I'm, I'm going to uh, shift on to the next slide. And I'm, I'm looking here, and we've, we've, got, we've got some questions coming in about Jenkins. Um, um, so uh, may, maybe we can tie all of these things together about uh, um, people are asking, how does Jenkins work in conjunction with infrastructure management tools? Uh, thanks, Sujit. Uh, are there connectors that enable it to integrate with public cloud vendors like Azure and AWS? And then uh, the more generic questions on the slide of what are the key features uh, that, that uh, organizations should expect from uh, a CI CD uh, solution? So may, maybe you can address, uh, tie all of those together and address them all in one go. Sure. Um, yeah, I'll take the first two uh, sort of together because they're similar. Uh, in my mind, the, the, if, as I understood the questions, they were sort of how does Jenkins and, and, and the cloud be, how do we kind of deal with integrating infrastructure tools and also maybe pub, public cloud tools like Azure or, you know, AWS, Amazon's uh, Elastic Cloud Compute Platform. So um, the the easy answer here, as Ryan said earlier, the easy answer, the short answer is, you know, Jenkins has a plug-in architecture. And so, um, there are somewhere close to a thousand open source plugins out in the community that have been developed, um, you know, all over the world by all kinds of developers. Um, Cloudbees uh, employs a lot, a lot of the elite now uh, con uh, contributing developers to Jenkins, but honestly, a lot of the plugins out there of those 1,000 were not developed in house here at Cloudbees, and I think that's a testament to the community behind it. And so. Uh, if, if you go and look out there, you'll see that there are plugins for Amazon EC2. You'll see that there are plugins for um, integrating with VMware to spin up new build machines to build your software. Um, so the you know the, the really easy answer for these two is sort of via via our plugin architecture in Jenkins. Um, also, you know, Cloudbees is doing a lot to add some of these core constructs to Jenkins. So one of the things we've added is this concept of an underlying thing called a cloud. So Jenkins now just knows from a generic perspective what a cloud is and what it means. And so Jenkins can now talk to 50 different cloud providers and companies out there, um, including our own. Uh, we, we actually have an offering called Jenkins Operations Center which actually, from the perspective of Jenkins, acts as the cloud provider. And what that allows you to do is, is share Jenkins' uh, build resources and configuration for large organizations who maybe run, you know, three, four, five different or more different instances of Jenkins um, for various purposes. You can actually tie those together with our Ops Center product, and, and, and Jenkins views those resources as a cloud provider. Um, so there's a ton going on in this space. I encourage you to kind of research Cloudbees and, and research Jenkins and look into what we're doing here. Um, I think the other question, if I understood, was just about, you know, what are some of the, the key fe features of a CI, CD tool um, to look for? Um, you know, obviously, you know, the very basics are just it builds for the environments you want to build for. Um, you know, it does the things you need it to do from a build perspective. It integrates with your test tools. Uh, for me, I, would, I think the answer to this is integration. The key feature of a build tool, of a, of a continuous de uh, delivery tool, is integration. Does it integrate with you know the various other tools we use today to kind of get our jobs done? Um, but it, so there's but a, again, it's a bit like the philosophical question I asked Ryan earlier. It's does it reflect the jobs that you're trying to do? I know that, that exactly. that's exactly generic answer, but no, it's great. I mean, ultimately, ultimately, what you do with Jenkins and what Cloudbees helps folks do is model uh, release pipelines. I mean, it couldn't be any more. It can be any more basic. If you did it in PowerPoint, um, you can go use Jenkins, uh, you know, Jenkins Enterprise by Cloudbees to build out those same types of workflows, uh, you know, in Jenkins. So, I think it makes a lot of sense. Robert, do you do you see any difference in in how tools are used, whether you're you're building for internal clients or whether you're working with external clients? I mean, you did make the point earlier about the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment. 
Well, I mean, that really depends upon how you want to go through and get it set up. Um, as far as uh, internal and external, I, mean, I guess the question I would ask you, are you, are you talking about uh, delivery to an external client or are you talking about integration with an external well, that's that's uh, that's a very good question. We could end up uh, probably having a whole new <laughs> webinar on that exact topic, but maybe we better cut it short. Yeah. So, so I, mean, I, I don't think it necessarily differs. I mean, how you actually lay it out uh, might be uh, might be somewhat different. I mean, when I first uh, when I first set up my first. Uh, uh, CD setup. Um, it actually was back when, before uh, Jenkins, it was back when Hudson was around, and I grabbed Hudson because it was, it was uh, new and it was, had all the plugins and and it had a, a nice interface to be able to allow me to to connect things up. Um, I was delivering for both internal as well as external projects, um, and. Uh, there, there, there were some some subtle differences, especially when we had to go through and do integration and stuff. But much muchness of just going through and connecting up your pipelines, you you would you would just you had the flexibility to set up whatever pipelines you happen to need. Okay, thank you very much. Let's uh, let's move on because we're we're kind of coming up to the hour now, um, and I'm sure we can run over a couple of minutes, but I don't want to too much. Uh, I, Andy, I wanted to bring you back in here and, and, and Brian as well. Um, and I think we've covered a lot of these topics around the plugins, uh, the, the open source uh, import of, uh, of Jenkins uh, and what that brings to the party. Um, could, could any of this really happen without the cloud as well? Yeah, I'll, t I'll take a stab at that one first. You know, sure, there, there are lots of organizations, you know, just like there's a maturity scale for DevOps, we find or I find in my daily work, there's also a maturity scale for sort of cloud and just cloud adoption. And, and you know, a lot of organizations, uh, financial services, insurance type organizations, they're, they're not quite there yet as far as feeling totally comfortable um, pushing their source code out, it, you know, pre-production source code out to cloud environments. And we're, so, we're asking um, for several dimensions of maturity here, aren't we? It's, it's it, exactly, exactly. And and I think this is a different one. It's almost you know, and it's almost a requirements, a non-functional requirements question or security question. Are they do they want to lever, try to leverage some of those benefits, or, or are they focusing uh, honing in more on the DevOps? And so if you look at CloudBees offerings, you can even see that reflected in our product offerings. We we offer a fully on-prem model of support for Jenkins for folks who totally do their CI, CD, you know, in-house, and also we, uh, a cloud offering. So our, our Jenkins platform is a service. So I think the maturity in, in cloud adoption is reflected even in the way we kind of work with our customers. Uh, and the, 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 key, the key here is, uh, is hybrid, right, Ryan? I, I think so. I think, you know, it's dev test in the cloud is, is kind of a no-brainer these days. And performance testing is a great use case. Production is where everybody has a little bit of the, the, the concern. And uh, I tend to work more um, with financial services, and that's usually where the, the, the concern is. It's over customer privacy of data. It's over auditability of these. Uh, but dev test in the cloud, especially from the provisioning and the management, uh, is a big paradigm shift. And whether you're doing that in-house, with your private paths or public paths. Usually it's easier to start in public because it takes skills to build up your own private. But I do think that uh, you know, whether you're doing public, private, or some sort of hybrid, whether you're using virtualization or cloud, this is the way forward. And things are just, it's a natural time before things migrate in that direction. Okay, so um, we're, we're just about up on the hour now. So uh, I'm gonna move us into, uh, into the, the kind of wrap up um, wrap-up question that we, we said we'd have at the beginning, which is uh, uh, for each of our panelists, um, a, a really strong example of a success story that um, kind of gives us a, a real strong takeaway take, take um, uh, um, uh, from the webinar that, that they might be able to use in practice. So I'm going to come to you, Robert, first. Uh, what, what, what would you say is a, is a really strong example of this stuff done right? So I think that the one that I can think of, and it's somewhat similar to what I was talking about uh, earlier, was um, a full end-to-end -end, um, pipeline that allowed for everybody in the business, whether you're a developer or you're an operations person or you were purely on the business side, to really be able to go through, understand what's going on, be able to collaborate, and be able to uh, get product out right 
that works well with your customers, that is uh, performant as well as allows you to, uh, to meet any sort of uh, uh, contractual or regulatory requirements that you have, that you're able to go through and uh, build out your environments, whether it's dev, test, or, or, or production, and have that level of confidence. That's, that's what I've seen as far as, the, as a real, uh, um, a, a real uh, example. Um, and in right. fact, that organization was uh, was a, a big enterprise. So we're talking about deployments of uh, the tens of thousands of, of systems worldwide. Okay, over to you, Brian. Let's uh, keep it snappy. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, well, mine's a little bit smaller scale, but again, I'm working with a software company in the educational space, and we went in and helped them adopt sort of the CI/CD. So now, uh, every single change for their uh, make into the sub their um, subversion repository uh, can be rolled out, and they can rebuild their entire infrastructure from production from a, a single set of scripts. And so everything can be completely built up and torn down again and again and again. Wow, that that's a good that's a good symptom of success. And uh, fi final word from you, Andy. And, and I'll leave you with the final question as well with, uh, uh, from, uh, um, from our, 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 our panelists. Uh, why doesn't CloudBees provide consulting services? Maybe you can wrap that into your uh, success story. Maybe you don't need to. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, so, you know, from a customer success perspective, obviously our goal here at CloudBees is to really make sure folks are up running productive with a highly, uh, highly available Jenkins infrastructure to do DevOps. And so, um, you know, like I said earlier, I, I had the, the lucky, fortunate position to see these types of success stories all week because that's really what we do. Um, our goal is to, to get our customers productive. I'll give you, I'll just for the, for the audience here, I'll give one example. I am working with a large are really well-known national retailer, you know, big brand kind of retailer um, right now. They're using, you know, they're using our, they've been uh, customers for quite a while, uh, two plus years of our Jenkins Enterprise offering. And they, you know, there's so many ROI little uh, studies we've done with them around. They, we, we have a plug-in that's part of Jenkins Enterprise called Templates. And it allows you to templatize your Jenkins build jobs to just drastically reduce cut and paste type errors and the copy paste nature of doing DevOps work with Jenkins. Um, so there's so many good case studies there. But the big one right now from a success perspective that we're working with this retailer on, it's a Fortune 500 type company, um, is around our Jenkins Operations Center product. And so they have thousand, literally thousands of build jobs five to ten Jenkins masters, they're actually really successfully using our Jenkins Operations Center product to visualize across those teams, you know, the health and status across the organization. And so for large enterprises, really big IT shops, um, there, there are a lot of really great, uh, you know, a lot of really great studies that we're able to be a part of, which is, like I said, a really exciting space to be in right now. Um, to the question that came in, we actually do consulting. Uh, so that's an easy one for me. Uh, oh, we have a partnership. Go, yeah, there you go. we have a partner channel where we do a lot of the consulting. My team also, from a solution architecture perspective, does consulting work quite a bit. So um, I'm actually headed out on a flight to, to Canada later today to go up and whiteboard with a customer with well, new ideas. Cesar Hernandez, that, that, that's your answer. So. I, I'm, I'm going to have to wrap it up because we're, we're right up against the, against the wire. So uh, um, but thank you very, very much to, uh, to my panels. My, my name is John Collins, and uh, just uh, have, a, have a goodbye from Robert, Ryan, and Andy. Thank, th thanks, guys. You, you, you've, you've been a dream to work with, and uh, I hope that uh, you, the audience, have, have enjoyed um, listening to, to the best way and the best approach to, to getting your continuous delivery strategy right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.